Hello everybody, I am Jay Shady, and you are listening to The Voice of Reason. So, I hope that everybody got the positivity from this channel for my Raw review last week. I hope you took in all that positivity, all the praise that I gave Raw, the nice, happy, general outlook. Because you can be assured that the praising, the positivity, it is all done, extinct. The buck has stopped here. What a shitty, shitty, shitty ass show tonight. Like straight up, just horrible. I mean, I wanted to go to sleep so bad. I mean, I just feel bad for people who had to sit through this like I did, you know? this. We were just torturing ourselves with this shit. I just wanted to go to bed and call it a night. But I'm doing this Raw review for you guys. So, you know, we follow up Raw in the New Jersey uh, IZOD Center. Arguably the greatest crowd in Raw history. A point could be made there. How do you follow that up? With fucking South Carolina? Are you serious? Are you fucking serious? Like, alright, I'm sorry for any uh, South Carolina subscribers that I have out there. No offense, but South Carolina fucking sucks. Are you see Like, this crowd was just... I never heard such a dead crowd. Especially after Raw last week. Everybody was tuning into Raw, seeing if the crowd from last week would hold over for future Raws. But nope. Let's go right back to moms and kids who don't know a shit thing about fucking wrestling. I don't understand why these people pay tickets to go see a show that they have no interest in. Not even John Cena got a reaction tonight. I mean, South Carolina, how do you follow that up? Thank God it's going to be in the UK next week. This way we can get some good crowd shit. But after that crowd, you go to South fucking Carolina. I mean, what is in South Carolina? What the fuck do these people do over there? Where they just hunt like bears and shit? There's nothing to do over there. Um, this is just a thing. I mean, I get that WWE wants to be all over the world. Save South Carolina and like uh, hick towns like that. I'm sorry, but I'm just really upset right now. Save the towns like that for house shows or smackdowns. In my opinion, Raws should always be in major, major cities, major wrestling places. This way it looks like people give two shits about the show. So you open up the show, everybody's excited for Raw because of last week's show. How do you open this shit up? With Orton and Sheamus versus Big Show. You know, the, the match and the three people that uh, New Jersey was booing the fuck out of. The match that last week started all these random chants, and that's how you open up Raw. One of the lamest openings in Raw history, in my opinion. It's a handicap match with Orton and Sheamus versus Big Show. Isn't the handicap stipulation supposed to be two heels versus a face? Isn't that a way to have like the face face uh, have have to uh, beat animosity, beat you know um, numbers against their favor? How is it like logical to have two faces fighting a heel? Like it's just crisscross if you fucking understand what I mean. So I didn't understand this. How is it impressive that it takes Orton and Sheamus to beat Big Show? That's not that impressive. Um, thank God this wasn't a long match. It was like seven minutes. But this was just stupid. Having a handicap match with two faces taking on a heel. It should be the other way around. Uh, Orton and Sheamus go over here. I don't know what to say. Horrible opener. Then you get 3, 3MB come out. Apparently they had some segment on SmackDown. I don't watch that fucking... Horrible shit fest of a show, SmackDown, so I don't know what's going on in the SmackDown world. But apparently, 3MB had a segment, and uh, The Shield started beating them up. So 3MB comes out this week, and they're talking about The Shield. They're calling The Shield out, and Brock Lesnar comes out. I was very excited. I didn't expect Brock Lesnar there tonight. Um, and this isn't a segment you expect Brock Lesnar to be in, so nice a uh, little bit of surprise there. Brock Lesnar comes out, beats the shit out of 3MB, does like two F5s to Heat Slater, but then it just fucking falls apart from there. Paul Heyman comes out, and he starts getting on the mic, and he's talking about having another fucking match with Triple H. Holy shit, you know? Everybody was complaining about uh, Triple H and Lesnar having one rematch, but you know, both stop it there. Let's just keep it going. I mean, what the fuck, you know? Seriously, I mean, I don't even care who wins anymore. I don't even care if Triple H, I'm not even going to bitch if Triple H wins. I just do not want to see this match a third time in like, what, six, seven months? I just do not understand 
the way WWE utilizes these part-timers. They're part-timers. They have limited dates. Why are they having three of the same matches? Shouldn't you use the part-timers every time they have a match? Shouldn't it be something different with another opponent? Why are none of these part-timers facing new people? I mean, they're all facing each other like legends. I mean, this is just stupid. I mean, you could have used the part-timers to put over new talent in a great way, but instead they're just having the same fucking matches over and over again. This is getting ridiculous. Oh, it's a steel cage match. Yay. This saves it. I'm going to jerk off now. They're fighting a steel cage, a PG steel cage. We're not we're, we're not going to get any blood. We're not going to jump off of the cage and shit. It's just going to end by pinfall or some shit. Triple H doing the Kamara lock or some shit, making Lesnar tap out. This is fucking ridiculous. How many times are we going to see this match? Then you get Antonio Cesaro versus Kofi Kingston for the U.S. Championship. And Tony Cesaro comes out. I guess he has a new gimmick now. He's like yodeling. Like yodeling. <laughs> He's doing this for like 30 seconds. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? I'm 22 years old. Am I seriously watching this shit and analyzing it? Writing notes on it? Writing notes on a man fucking yodeling? This is what like Raw has come to. This is what my life has come to as a grown man. You know... I mean, what is with these gimmicks that they have? These fucking retarded, phony-ass gimmicks. Like you have a gimmick of a guy being a ballroom dancer, a Funkasaurus, a guy yodeling. Whatever happened to the gimmick of somebody being a badass and beating the shit out of people, you know? That worked in the past, you know? Why not use what worked in the past and use it now? But no, we have to have some guy yodeling in order to get over today. Okay. Then you get this match. I was jokingly put it, I put on a Facebook status, if Kofi wins, we riot, as a joke, because nobody, I don't think, expected Kofi Kingston to win, this motherfucker's a jobber, a PG bitch, has no business in the company, he hasn't won a match in God knows how long, <laughs> and he hits the Trouble in Paradise or some shit, and I was like, okay, Cesaro's gonna kick out of this and win the match, but no, one, two, three! Kofi Kingston is your new United States champion. Holy fucking shit. You know, just, I'm at a loss for words right now. You take the belt off Antonio Cesaro, a guy with some good fucking wrestling skills, a guy who was screwed without not being on the WrestleMania card, and you have him give the belt up to this goofball. Kofi Kingston, I mean, this is part of the mother and kid initiative, I guess. Kofi Kingston, what has this guy done? What is, what mo... Name me one moment that this guy has done besides, you know, doing the pogo stick shit at the Royal Rumble. What moment has this guy done to WWE to make him appear to be a fucking champion, you know? I feel so bad for Cesaro. And then at the end, Kofi Kingston says, Finally, I brought the title back home. Um, is it Kofi Kingston from, like, Jamaica or some shit? How is Jamaica the United States? I don't think that makes sense to me. I mean... Fuck! Then you get um, Dolph Ziggler coming out. He cuts a promo talking about how he's the world heavyweight champion and all this shit. How he's a show off. Kind of a decent promo in my opinion. Uh, then he gets interrupted by Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio is all like, I'm starting, uh, I'm going to do my rematch clause. Then uh, Jack Swagger comes out right before the match is about to start. And uh, Jack Swagger... Um, Starts fighting with Del Rio and starts beating up Del Rio and shit. So it looked like we were gonna get the Del Rio versus Swagger, uh, uh, Del Rio versus a uh, Ziggler match, but we didn't. And this continues out throughout the night. I mean, it was an okay segment, nothing that great. Then you get um the announcement, the best part of the show tonight. Next week will be the Brothers of Destruction and Daniel Bryan. That's right, Kane and Undertaker against the Shield in a six-man tag match at Raw in London. Definitely looking forward to that. So glad that we're getting The Undertaker in a match on free TV. You know, you can't say that about any other any other of these part-timers. That's why I think I have a much higher respect for Taker. You know, I just hope that they actually have this match and they'll do some bait-and-switch shit where they don't have this match. I really want to see this, and I think this is a good spot for The Shield to go over here, you know, against the team with The Undertaker in it. That'd be fucking amazing. So looking forward to that. But then you get fucking Team Hell No versus Primetime Players. This has to be the 14th, 15th time I've seen this match in like the past six months. I mean, 
like I said, everybody's creaming their pants because Triple H restored the tag team division. But why the fuck am I say seeing the same boring ass tag team match every other week? If it's not Team Hell No versus the Primetime Players, it's Team Hell No versus Primo and Epico. Ooh, tag team division is restored. We're at the height of the Hardy Boys, the Dudley Boys, Edge and Christian. This is so great. WWE is being saved. Hell No wins. Who the fuck cares? Then you get Ryback's promo. He's cutting like a backstage promo. Like, not really with the interviewer. He's just cutting it himself. Um, it was like a weird fucking promo though. It was like an excuse to show highlights of the whole Shield and Ryback feud. They showed a bunch of past segments. It was just strange. It's like I was watching, you know, a television show. How they have at the beginning of the episode a recap from everything that's been happening in the last couple months. And that's how this promo came off. You know, I'm guessing this was for the casual fan and the moms and kids. You know, those people who don't watch Raw every week. A way to keep them up to speed. I mean, I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, if it, I mean, it's different. I'll say that, but I don't know if they could pull this off doing this a bunch of times. Just have this be a one-time thing for the fucking casual mom and kid fans. But Ryback, you know, he's kind of promo saying how he's been in John Cena's shadow. John Cena hasn't been helping him out when Shield has been attacking him. He said he said some good true shit about John Cena. You know, hogging the spotlight like how we all know John Cena loves to do. But my thing is, you have Ryback turn heel, and how does WWE follow it up? Giving Ryback a spot where he's least good in? Everybody knows Ryback can't use a mic too good, so they have Ryback cut like a 10 minute promo. You couldn't just have Ryback beat the shit out of John Cena backstage for 5 minutes? I mean, this is how they would have done it in the old days, but they need to fucking, you know, prolong their time because they don't have enough shit on this show for three hours, so they have to have Ryback cut a 15-minute promo. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't really that good. Then you get our truth versus Wade Barrett. You know, this was a theme of the night: having champions lose to fucking goofballs. Wade Barrett versus our truth. This is another match. I was like, I'm not even gonna really care about because Wade Barrett's gonna win this. Obviously, our truth hasn't done a fucking thing since he came back. I mean, what what did he do? He was in a uh, he won a victory with Santino and Zack Ryder versus 3MB. Yay! You know that's that merits a shot against uh, the Intercontinental Champion. But I guess it does. And our truth beats Wade Barrett. I mean, let me say that it wasn't an Intercontinental uh, Championship match on the line. Thank God. But our truth beats Wade Barrett. Are you serious? I mean, this is just disgusting. And this happened again with the champion jobbing out to a goofball. This happens one more time. You get this with Cesaro jobbing out to Kofi Kingston and Wade Barrett losing to R-Truth. Who did this? Was a five-year-old kid booking this shit tonight? R-Truth. You have your intercontinental champion. You know, Wade Barrett won it in a hot victory in the New Jersey crowd against Miz last week. And now he's jobbing to our truth And you know, everybody was saying, you know, after uh, last week, hopefully this puts the, uh, a more uh, strong direction towards the Intercontinental Championship. Hopefully they book it great now after the reception we Barrett got. But all your hopes are fucking smashed again because now the Intercontinental Champion looks like he has no business holding that belt because he lost to our truth I don't even have words. I just wish... That the crowd was like last week's crowd so they could boo this shit. The problem was that this was a South Carolina crowd that wasn't reacting to fuck all. So they didn't give two shits. This, that's why WWE gets to get away with everything that they do. Because the crowds that they go to in the bumblefuck hick towns, they just don't care. Then you get uh, Team Road Scholars versus Kali and Santino. I mean, are you serious? Why are we getting this match, you know? Kali versus Santino. This is your tag team division, guys, that you're talking about. Triple H saving. Um, thank God uh, Rose Scholars win, but um, I think Damien Sando has to do a roll-up on Santino while Santino is distracted. He can't even straight-up beat the guy. It has to be like some sneaky roll-up shit. I mean, the fuck is going on? It's like after last week's show... They had so much attention on them after last week's show. And they just go right back to the rated G direction. 
they didn't take a hint from the crowd last week. WWE straight up does not give a fuck what their fans think. Then you get Fandango. And I was looking forward to this segment. I'm not going to make believe I love the guy Fandango. I just, I like to see people having fun. Especially YWC. You know, with all the shit we get, why are people bashing other people like uh, promoting a fucking theme song? It's just the theme song, you know. Fucking relax, you know. Are people not allowed to have fun watching a wrestling theme song hit on the top iTunes top 100 shit? What is the big fucking deal? Seriously, what is up your ass with that shit? It's not like we're saying Fandango is great. We're just, you know, trolling all other communities by having a wrestling theme song on the iTunes. So calm down and take a breather with that shit. But yeah, um, Fandango comes out. Jerry Lawler has to remind people of the Fandango theme song craze, I guess, because they were worried that South Carolina wouldn't know what the fuck is going on. They wouldn't know who Fandango is or what Fandango Wing is. Fandango comes out, and you know, this probably would have been an awesome segment if they saved this for the UK, but since they had it here, it just fell so flat. Fandango was, you know, it, you could tell WWE was trying to get the audience to do the da da did, but South Carolina didn't know what the fuck was going on. They didn't know what to do. They just stood around like a bunch of fucking dummies. And Fandango's just telling them to repeat his name. Nobody's participating. This fell flat as fuck. Would have been an awesome segment in a major city. But they had to do this shit in South Carolina, you know. Where, you know, nobody fucking watches wrestling, you know. They're just there because, you know, there's nothing else to do in South Carolina. So let's go to the... WWE event, yeehaw! Okay, and then Fandango tells them all to go Fandangle themselves, and I agree. Then you get Jack Swagger versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, this was an okay match, but again, Dolph Ziggler, his first Raw match as World Heavyweight Champion, and what does he do? He jobs to Jack Swagger. And how does Dolph Ziggler job to Jack Swagger? Jack Swagger gets a roll up on Dolph Ziggler. I mean, what is going on? <laughs> it's like, it, WrestleMania is over, so let's book our champions to look like shit. Why can a champion not get a fucking victory in this day and age? This was ridiculous. What was the reason to have Jack Swagger go over fucking Dolph Ziggler here? Couldn't you just have Jack Swagger fucking beat Alberto Del Rio this way to have both of them be in contention for the belt? You have to have Jack Swagger go over Dolph Ziggler? Way to make me believe that Dolph Ziggler deserves to be a world heavyweight champion. He had to beat a guy with who was on one leg, and now he's losing to Jack Swagger. This is not acceptable. After the crowd popped like crazy for Ziggler to be champion, WWE repays them by booking Dolph Ziggler to look like shit. This company, I'm, I'm so done with this company. I mean, they give you something good. And then they just spit on it and take a shit on it and piss on it. It's like, you know, and it's like you don't even care anymore for the good shit that they give you because they just fucking put all this shit around and just destroy it. This is ridiculous. And then they announced that it's going to be a triple threat match with all those guys, Ziggler, Swagger, W at Extreme Rules. Then CM Punk comes out. He starts cutting a promo. He's talking about how after 434 days of being champion and losing, he didn't know what to do. He figured the next thing was to go to face The Undertaker and beat the streak. He, he uh, pauses, he uh, stops mid-sentence, hugs Paul Heyman and leaves. So I guess this is a good way to get Punk off of TV since he's going to take time off, rest his injuries, come back fresh. I, I guess this was okay because it kind of leaves that whole mysterious why did he walk away thing. Hopefully he can come back fresh, come back with new stuff to his character. I would like to see him come back as a face. This way he could face Brock Lesnar and have a match with a heel Brock Lesnar. But I hope he comes back as more of like a tweener type face. Not, you know, that baby face shit that he was doing after um, when he was in the beginning of his championship run where he was just pandering and becoming stale, not doing the pipe bombs and shit. Then you get Caitlyn versus one of the Bell sluts. I didn't watch this match really. One of those fucking sluts won. Then you get John Cena. John Cena comes out to close the show. He's fucking talking to the crowd. The crowd isn't even really responding. Like, the crowd, I just do not understand why they paid hard-earned money for these tickets. Like, couldn't they go to, like, a rodeo show that night? Did they have to go to Raw? And then he calls out Ryback. Uh, Ryback comes out. John Cena's just cutting out, like, a boring, just 
not exciting promo. Just talking to Ryback, saying, like, you know, I've had to face people that wanted this belt. They weren't getting it. Just a generic Cena promo. It was really bad to close out the show. And then the Shield comes out. Ryback leaves the ring, and he lets the Shield beat down John Cena, and Ryback just walks away and watches them beat down John Cena. Furthering his heel turn, I mean, it was an okay ending, I guess. I mean, I, I would have liked to see Ryback beat up John Cena himself, but I mean, yeah. This show sucked so bad. How do you go from last week to this? And for the people that didn't even want to give last week their praise, like, you missed your opportunity to give your one piece of praise because we're not going to get anything like last week ever again, probably, you know? If you're going to not give last week's praise, then you might as well just give up because this shit is just going to suck from here on out. You know, I got my positivity, I got my praising out last week, it's back to bitching, back to ranting, back to complaining, because WWE just cannot capitalize off of any success they have, they have to just, it's like just because it was the WrestleMania, post-WrestleMania, it's like, okay, here's all, here's for our dedicated fans, now that that shit is over, from here on out until next WrestleMania 30, it's all gonna be for the kids and moms, no sense, no logical shit, Handicap matches with, you know, uh, two faces against one heel. Champions jobbing out to goofballs. People who haven't won matches in, like, months. Getting a victory and a championship. It's just ridiculous shit. You know, I thought I was coming back. I thought last week saved me for a little while longer. But this Raw just drained me the fuck out. And I'm this much closer to leaving again. I've been starting to leave Impact on my TV. Not watching Impact because I never, I never, I haven't watched it in like God knows how long. But I, mean, I just feel good about giving them the rating. Because something needs to change in this WWE world. This shit sucks dick. Okay, there you go. There's my review. Fucking horrible show. Don't listen to anybody that says this was an okay or good show. If they say this is okay or good, they're fucking full of shit and they're just rated G loving cocksuckers in my opinion. South Carolina, you fucking suck. Okay, Jay Shady, the voice of reason. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.